2022 was a terrible year for stocks. The S&P 500 lost 20%, the Dow Jones Industrial Average was down nearly 10%, and the tech-heavy Nasdaq Composite plunged more than 30%. Investors can blame the downturn in markets on raging inflation, a hawkish Fed, the war in Ukraine, and a looming global recession. But in every downturn, there's still opportunity. We spoke with several top performing fund managers who strongly believe this is now a stock picker's market. Here are their 20 best ideas for stocks in 2023. The first two stock picks come from Charles Limonidis at ValueWorks. He likes Cord Energy, which is ideal for a bumpy period in markets as it is a defensive play with huge cash generation and is also selling an exceedingly attractive valuation. The company was formed in July after the successful merger of Oasis and Whiting Petroleum and owns nearly 1 million net acres of drilling rights. Cord Energy is also very shareholder friendly, returning the great bulk of its more than 1 billion in free cash flow over the last few years to shareholders in the form of buybacks or dividends. His second pick is Air Lease, which purchases commercial aircraft and leases them to airline customers worldwide. The industry has gone through a tumultuous experience during the pandemic, but the company has basically been financially healthy relative to many of its peers. Though it has some debt, with travel rebounding and many planes at full capacity again, Air Lease is poised to benefit from pricing flexibility and a huge fleet of aircraft. The next picks come from James Davalos at Kinetic Small Cap Opportunities Fund. He highlights defense technology company Khaki International, which he thinks covers all the right niches that are relevant to national security. Unlike Lockheed Martin or Northrop Grumman, which manufactures missiles and planes, Khaki specializes in battlefield communications, encryption, and cybersecurity. Even after rising nearly 10% in 2022, shares of the company remain cheap on an absolute basis, according to Davalos, especially when compared with more traditional defense contractors that have heavy capital expenditures. He also likes the Permian Basin Royalty Trust, the trust itself is a passive royalty on the Waddell Ranch, the lease on which was bought up by a private company named Blackbeard Operating just over two years ago. The small cap operator has already made some exciting improvements to old wells by injecting fluid or carbon dioxide. And though relatively cheap per well, those costs have obscured the dividend in the short term, according to Davalos. Once Blackbeard's capital expenditures taper off, however, Davalos predicts the stock could easily be distributing a dividend of up to three or four dollars per share next year. The next stocks come from Kimball Brooker at First Eagle Global Fund. Brooker likes HCA Healthcare, the largest hospital company in the United States with more than 180 sites of care, because it has developed a market share big enough so that they can use scale to create the best facilities around, he says. Unlike most hospitals, which are not for profit, the company is able to reinvest significant cash to upgrade facilities and thereby attract better doctors and improve patient outcomes. Brooker also likes Comcast, which may appear to have a mountain of debt, roughly 90 billion at the end of September, but in reality, the company has used these years of low rates to take advantage of reasonably cheap financing, he says. One potential catalyst to watch for in the next few years is Comcast's roughly 33% stake in Hulu, which has an upcoming put option allowing the company to sell to Disney. At a minimum total valuation of around $27 billion for Hulu, that could result in roughly $9 billion for Comcast. The next stocks come from Thomas Huber at T. Rowe Price Dividend Growth Fund. He likes Becton Dickinson, because it's a good defensive growth company, though it has struggled with disappointing margins and an FDA recall on its Alaris infusion pump last year. Still, he says the worst is behind it. The company is slowly raising its dividend yield, and there's good money to be made in companies as they improve and come out of a troubled period. He also likes Philip Morris International, which has been a longtime holding of the fund since 2008, because it's a stock where you're paid to wait thanks to its 5% dividend yield. The tobacco company is nicely set up as we go into next year, thanks to the success of its main product, the Ecos device, which uses heat rather than burn technology to consume tobacco. Not only is it a healthier alternative to regular cigarettes, the reduced risk product category has higher margins than the core traditional tobacco business. The next two picks come from Christopher Morangi of the Gabelli Value 25 Fund. His first pick is the Liberty Braves. He highlights this tracker stock, which rose 12% last year and owns the Atlanta Braves baseball team as well as the real estate development rights around the ballpark. Marenghi says that by buying the stock at market price today, you're buying equity in the Braves at roughly $1.5 billion valuation. Other teams like the New York Mets have sold for more than $2 billion during COVID and the Braves generate much more revenue, he points out. 
He predicts that if the team gets sold, it could garner a valuation nearing $3 billion. Marenghi also likes Dish Network, despite a nearly 58% decline in shares last year. He has high hopes for the satellite TV and wireless services provider next year, having owned the stock for decades now. While the company's traditional satellite video business is a bit of a melting ice cube and has taken a hit from cord cutting, it still generates large amounts of free cash flow. What's more, he's particularly excited about the company's wireless network business. Dish has been spending tens of billions of dollars to acquire Spectrum licenses around the country as it builds out a new 5G network. The next stock picks come from Eric Schoenstein at Jensen Quality Growth Fund. A 10-year holding of the fund, TJX operates brands like TJ Maxx, Marshalls, and Home Goods. Schoenstein sees potential for the stock next year, calling it a relatively resilient business with defensive characteristics and a strong correlation to consumer spending. He thinks that as consumers are more mindful of costs, TJX's great deals, low prices relative to peers, and customer loyalty should be beneficial for the stock. Amid an environment where consumers are facing higher rents, mortgages, and home ownership costs, TJX stands to benefit from the subsequent trade-down effect and bargain theory as consumers cut back on spending. Another of Schoenstein's top picks is Minnesota-based United Health Group, the largest managed healthcare and insurance company in the country, which serves roughly 149 million people. In a slowing economic environment, United Health is not only a defensive play, with shares rising this year while most of the market tanked, but also a growth company at the same time. He likes the company's resilient business model and ability to generate substantial cash flow, with stable earnings growth to limit volatility in the stock over time. The next two picks come from Kenneth Kurt at Aerial Fund. He likes Royal Caribbean Cruises, which the fund has owned shares of for roughly 15 years. Like the other major cruise operators, Royal Caribbean struggled during the pandemic as lockdowns effectively crippled the industry with fleets under extended no-sale orders. Despite a 37% drop in the stock this year, Kurt points to significant upside ahead, especially as management aims for double-digit earnings power by 2025. What's more, on a comparable basis, cruise pricing is now above pre-pandemic levels, while occupancy rates have also rebounded significantly. A big part of the story is customer retention, he says. Kurt also likes Zebra Technologies, which is a market leader in enterprise asset intelligence focused on barcode scanning and inventory tracking technology. Zebra's largest customers include Amazon, Target, and many others spanning a range of sectors, including retail, manufacturing, healthcare, and transportation. He is particularly optimistic about some of Zebra's newer technologies, such as radio frequency identification, which uses electromagnetic fields to track and identify different objects in transit. The next stock picks are from Amy Zhang at Alger Midcap Focus Fund. She likes Woodlands, Texas-based waste collection, disposal, and recycling company Waste Connections, which she calls a defensive business that would be resilient in a slowing economic environment. In a business less focused on volume growth and more concerned with pricing, Waste Connections has a strong track record of industry-leading margins and cash flow. She also likes long-term compounder Insulate, a medical device company focused on treating diabetes patients through its body-worn Omnipod insulin pump. Beyond the company's classic Omnipod and Omnipod Dash insulin management systems, sales have gotten a massive boost this year thanks to the company's newest device, the Omnipod 5 automated delivery system. It is the first tubeless automated insulin delivery system on the market, receiving FDA clearance in early 2022 with a full U.S. launch late last summer. The next two picks come from Nancy Zevenbergen of the Zevenbergen Growth Fund. She likes Double Verify, a small cap software company focused on providing verification and safety for digital brand advertising. The company's technology helps brands and publishers with viewability by detecting fraud and protecting brand safety through avoiding poor content placement. She points out that with markets also incredibly concerned about brand safety with advertising, this type of ad spend should preclude the fear of a recession. Another pick for this year is cloud-based software fintech Bill.com which assists small businesses on accounts payable and receivable. The company helps smooth out back office payments. And while it was hit by a more challenging economic environment, that has been somewhat offset by pricing power and new customer momentum. What's more, the company is poised to benefit as they move money for clients in a rising rate environment. The last two picks come from Kersey Gibson of Bailey Gifford's U.S. Equity Growth Fund. One of the fund's more recent additions from mid-2021 is education tech company Duolingo, known for its app that teaches languages. One of the hardest parts of learning a new language is staying motivated to keep studying, particularly if you're not living in that country, she points out. 
Duolingo has taken a gamification approach to overcome this challenge. Since the app is free to use, the company has been able to grow organically, with relatively low marketing spend, allowing for more cash to be deployed toward product development. Her last pick, and also one of Bailey Gifford's largest holdings, is Canadian e-commerce giant Shopify, once a pandemic-era stock darling, which saw shares tank more than 70% in 2022. She likes what she describes as exciting changes, such as the company moving into enterprise markets and launching Shopify Audiences, a premium tool that helps businesses find new customers through focused digital advertising on platforms like Facebook or Google.